Hello, thank you so much. Uh, let me find my... Right, so um, yeah, there's lots of different businesses. Um, I'm all about being creative. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I love art. Um, I studied art history and archaeology in the UK and worked for um, private, a private collector, um, the British Museum, uh, Eskenazi, um, which, who was a, a private collector. Um, worked for the Listen Gallery, um, for it was commercial gallery, Hauser and Vert. Uh, and I, I basically had this amazing career in London. Um, and I probably didn't even realise at the time because I was really young. I sort of turned up to London when I was like 18. I was there for, for 10 years and, and had this experience. And I got a bit over it actually because I was sitting at such a high level of art and I just never felt that it was really me, I, you know, I used to, this one private collector I worked for, he actually, um, you know, dated Damien Hirst's wife and had original Francis Bacon's at, um, on his walls. So the wealth was just so different from what I was used to growing up. So when I came back to Australia, I was like, you know, what am I going to do? So I sort of started with art pharmacy because I never had the opportunity to collect art. So it really, I've really started very, very small. Um, you know, as Alex was saying before, it was all about community. I started this pop-up show. This is actually one of the first venues. Um, this is nearly four years ago now, and I just started a gallery. I just said, okay, let's just give it a go. So um, from there, we actually had an online gallery. Um, we did lots of activations in, in Oxford Street. Um, I, I mean, this is before pop-ups were the, the, the thing to do. Um, so we'd go in and we'd pa have painting parties. Like, sometimes we couldn't even afford the... Um, in, in the early days, actual um, window, you know, window signs, so we'd actually get an artist to actually paint it. Had all my friends come and help me, like, serve the drinks, throw the rubbish out and whatnot. It was just, it was literally everybody coming together and having a real fun time. We had people, like, queuing up out the doors just to be there. And I had a lot of branding people coming and going, this is amazing, you know, I want to I want to spend some money on you and I want to sponsor you for this event and whatnot. But it was just like, I was like, yeah, that's great. Let's, yeah, just go along with it. So it was sort of, it, it, it was really fun. Like, like, you know, in the first couple of years. And then I think I started getting a bit serious about it. I was like, right, okay, I'm not making any money. I need to start thinking about this as more of a, as, as a business. Um, we did, I mean, it was all about connecting the artists with, um, with buyers. So it started, you know, on a, on a small scale. Did a lot of, um, you know, tea with the artists. So actual people could come in and actually meet with the artists, have a drink with them as well. Did loads of pop-up shows. Um, this is the online gallery. So we've got about a hundred artists now online. Um, how it works is um, artists apply, uh, and we have actually got somebody that writes a bio on them. Um, we, we do Q&As on them. That we send out an e-newsletter every two weeks on the artists. So we actually try and help them when they come out of university or if there's you know, a mid-tier artist that are, is unrepresented, we, we, we help them on that journey. We've got photographers that actually go out to their studio, take pictures of them, so you feel like you've got this relationship with them. Uh, so we, this is now, I call this the bread and butter of my business. We sell quite a lot of works online all the time. Um, from there, uh, it, it sort of started about a year ago, the consulting, so we had a lot of um, magazines like Real Living Magazine contact us um, and feature us, so you, you'll, you'll see here, they'll say, here, I've got a mood board, can you, um, have you got an artwork to, to, to match this mood board? So we were, I was supplying works for them. Um, up here on the right-hand corner, you've got Luke Mangan at Mojo, so uh, it's a big warehouse down in, um, in Waterloo, so I had, uh, we had an artist, a local artist from Bondi that put some artworks up there. Um, Bressick Whitney, I started trying out, um, you know, renting um, artworks, which actually was, um, it was a bit of an experience because, you know, you'd have to go in and drill these holes into apartments. I remember doing it one night at like 10 o'clock at night and someone like knocking on the door going, you can't do this. I was trying to act super professional, it was quite funny, but... Um, uh, so then uh, um, I ran the other art fair last year as director of that. We did a lot of activations. Um, so we worked with like Mini Cooper. So this is an artist. Uh, so we actually painted the actual Mini and we drove around the city. So that was really fun. Um, Nespresso, so they contacted us um, in Bondi Junction and said, okay, we've got the Milano to Palmino range and we'd like an artwork to reflect that. So then I'd say, okay, here's, um, here's uh, you know, three artists, what do you think? And then from there, I manage all the concepts um, of the artists. Uh, Foxtel, I was working with them for four episodes last year with Deborah Hutton, that was really fun. Um, so I'd actually have to go in, I'd suggest, so every single episode there was a new artwork, uh, um, artist that was represented. So um, they actually had to finish it in six hours and if you didn't do that, so I remember at one time I was in the green room. They were like, "Is this guy going to finish?" And I was like, "Oh!" And I sort of I knew Molga, if you know if you, if you know who he is, he's um he's a pretty chilled out guy. But 
he did finish in time, thank God. Um, but I knew I could trust him. So, uh, so recently I did Deloitte um, this year. So I did a three months exhibition. Um, there's a new managing partner there called Dennis Kralis, and he wanted a new voice. They've got a, their own permanent collection. Um, and I basically had pretty f free reign. I put together a, a, a big proposal to them, and they, they said yes to everything. Um, and it was, it was fantastic. So this here particular work um, is by a student that's actually now at uh, Sydney College of the Arts, and it's Whispering Colours, and it's actually a sound installation. Um, Sarah Goffman up there in the corner, which is actually made from plastics, um, but looks like the Qing Dynasty. Um, and like a lot of the artists were unrepresented. We, had, we got a catalogue for them. We had a big party on the opening night, which was great. But it was just, and we sold a lot of works as well. So I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to next year if we do that again. We also did artist talks in there, and I had to open up the, um, a lot of, like they had partner events and whatnot. So it was actually connecting the artists actually to the corporates as well, and they had the opportunity to, to purchase um, work. So you can see here, this is one of the artists actually talking on the partner night. And so we went around, and they even gave us these little food. They brought me in one day and said, okay, this is the, f the, the food with the art. And literally, we had like a meeting. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Um, so this is actually Alyssa Sykes-Smith, um, she's actually at Sculpture by the Sea, she was one of the artists that actually got washed away unfortunately. Um, and Alyssa's amazing, I actually met her at National Art School like four years ago when I literally started um, Art Pharmacy, how we sort of met and she's, so it's really nice that, that relationship that I have with her now and I trust her and I know when, into a, you know, when I go into a space where she should go. And this is actually, um, if you are in that Harry Seidler building, it's this beautiful view and I said, what can you put in here, Alyssa? And she came up, met all the partners and we actually, she drew a, a beautiful um, concept work and um, over that weekend, it was a bank holiday weekend, and um, the man, Dennis came back back in over the weekend, and he fully freaked out that it wasn't going to be finished because level nine is like where all the meeting places come in. Um, but you know, I think she was there until Monday morning at six o'clock when the cleaners were coming in, so I think it was pretty um, pretty tight. Um, but that was that was a fun event. Um, so Mervac Shopping Centre, I've been working with uh, on level two. Um, so this is again, this is actually a, a Mulga work. Um, again, with so I was uh, doing a lot of activations um, at Broadway, like doing the hoardings, finding street artists to put up, uh, so to actually paint the hoardings. Um, and then they said to me, would you like to be um, our art consultant? And I was like, yes. So um, it was actually, that this is outside, but um, internally we had four artists um, and they all were um, local artists, um, which, which, you know, they really wanted local Australian artists. Um, here we've got Adam Goodrum, um, here on the left, he's a really quite well-known um, furniture designer, and I can't, you know, I, I came and said, can you come and work with me, please? And he said, yes, it was, it was great. I mean, he's working with, with all the big, big people out there, but it's the first time, you know, he's been able to get back into public art, which is great. Um, Kate Benazi, so she's down um, in Marrickville. Um, uh, this is Vincent Bure, who, with his pussy cat, I love this, I had to put this in somewhere for the cat lovers. Um, so this is behind the scenes, so I was actually updating my clients and saying, look, this is what we're doing, this is how we're working. So the nice thing about um, doing these larger commissions for the artists is they actually get paid an amount of money and then they get to do what they want. Rather than with an exhibition, what happens is they actually get, you know, they have to find, try and find the venue and then um, maybe some of the artworks won't get sold. But with the, with the commission, it's great because the artist has their own, uh, you know, uh, creative license, I suppose. And this is his work um, installed. Uh, this is a really great um, piece. This is actually Victoria Garcia, and it was actually a public art vote. So people actually had the opportunity to actually vote uh, what artwork they actually liked, and it was amazing um, that, you know, especially in a big retail centre like that, that they felt like they could actually vote on the, on the work. So this is the finished work that was, um, that was uh, selected. This is Char Time. Um, Again, just, you know, the bubble tea. So, you know, again, working with an artist uh, for, for the client. Um, Hoyts, which, so this is a bit crazy. This, this um, they actually wanted, um, so next to Hoyts on level two, they wanted some real street artists. And I was like, really, real, real street artists? Like, yeah. So all these, I had three artists that came in there. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think they really believed me when I said, um, you know, come in and paint this. And they actually got paid to do this because I think on the streets of, you know, the night before they're out, you know, on the street sort of thing. So it's quite funny. But actually, one of the artists I'm working with now um, on a private client, 
Um, so this is um, Gabby Malpaz, another artist that I've been working with. So, and actually on the opening night we, for, for Mervac, we actually, um, was a scar, so 200 of them were printed up. But she actually made this specifically for this event. So it's, you know, quite beautiful. And, you know, they wanted to use one of the same artists, but I said, look, why don't we try and use another artist? So it's all about supporting them and helping them grow as well. Um, this is an activation I've recently done with, which I've never done anything like this before. So this is it, this is um, Beam Centauri and uh, Akintoshi Whiskey, and it, and it was actually a, a national campaign. So looking at photographers all throughout Australia, and there was 12 images, and um, one of the images was selected, which we had last week, the launch the launch party, which was quite fun. Um, so the Sofitel Hotel in Lenley, so I, I learned a lot from this particular job. Um, that's the new ICC centre, so if you're staying in there, um, I, there's 555 rooms. Um, it was a really big project. Um, I learned a lot about how to um, internal stakeholding. Um, so because there was the Sofitel, Len Lease was the builder, a core who's managing it, and then you've got a private investor, and it was just like a moving fee. So I think from that situation, I realised it's really good to have like an art committee. Um, but look, it was great. We sent um, a, a, we had an Australian photographer who lives in London and uh, and, si and Sydney, and we sent her down to the south of France to take original artworks for the hotel. So it, they, the hotel actually owns the images, and then um, in the corner we have an artist called. Alex Ethel, who's based down in, um, in Melbourne, and she was thrilled to be a part of it. So that's literally just being built and um, procured at the moment. Um, this is a bit crazy. I like this one. This is um, Optus. Um, this is yarn bombing. So we actually went up to Macquarie Park, and um, there were 70 staff uh, there. And um, we went in uh, um, every week for an hour or hour and a half, and we actually were just knitting pom-poms and um, and then on the Saturday, on the weekend, we actually came in and um, yarn bombed the campus. It was um, and it was unusual because a lot of people that will, in, if, you know, I don't know if anyone here works at Optus, but it's a really big campus. There's 6,000 people, and everyone doesn't. It's like this, you know, it's this huge place. And you know, we had someone from HR, someone that was on the, on um, you know, on the phone, someone from finance, so they'd actually all get together and actually chat. You know, the first time that some people have actually met. Um, so there's lots of other um, things that I sort of do. Um, you know, I call it concept to cocktail, so from the beginning to end. Um, do framing. Do a lot of. I'm, I'm currently working with um, Five Dot Council and Wyon Council at the moment, looking at in, working with an insurance firm. So I just. It, it, it's such a moving feast. Every day is so different for me. Um, so this is this my new my new love. Um, Culture Scouts. So Culture Scouts is all about um, discovering Sydney differently. We've got, um, so we, uh, actually City of Sydney have given us a grant, so we, you know, that's great in the last sort of couple of months. Um, we've got lots of different areas. It started with Redfern Chippendale. We do street art walking tours, which are really popular, and we end at Young Henry's for a brewed beer. Um, we do uh, Surrey Hills. Um, this here with uh, Reko Ronnie, um, with his work. So we just, we literally, it's all about, you know, if you turn up to Sydney with your best friend who's maybe from Melbourne or from, I don't know, New York, you come in and it's all about sh showing Sydney in a different way. Um, we've met the most amazing people um, on our journey. Um, it's all about small businesses. Um, Destination New South Wales and Tourism Australia uses quite a lot um, with their female. So I'm taking around these awesome journalists. Like last week I took around someone from Harper's Bazaar and got taken out for lunch and then, um, uh, Judith Nelson from the White Rabbit Gallery opened her door to us to her private home. Uh, so it's opening up a lot of doors. So it actually works, even though it's, it's like a tour company, it actually works a lot with, um, with art. Um, so um, that's begin with an idea, and um, yeah, that's, that's my journey so far. Thank you.